The Our Coast project looks at safeguarding coastal energy generation and supply. We're interested in the energy sector because a lot of its infrastructure is on the coast. Through observations of radionuclide and heavy metal particles in salt marshes, we can better understand the past and future movement of these particles and their impact on the environment. It is important to model coastal circulation because this moves sediment and whatever else is in the water around our coastlines. The northwest of England and Wales is an important area for our coast and the nuclear industry, with facilities covering fuel manufacture and enrichment, the nuclear power stations themselves and the reprocessing of nuclear fuel. We have a particular focus on the northwest region because of its variety of coastal environments. We're also able to focus not just on energy generation but the other aspects of energy in the form of, let's say, the nuclear waste reprocessing plant at Sellafield. The West Cumbrian coast um, in northwest England has a high concentration of nuclear facilities and nuclear operations. Perhaps the key one is the Sellafield nuclear site, which is the home of the UK's reprocessing plants. Um, Sellafield is also the home to a number of shut, now shut down nuclear reactors, including the world's first commercial nuclear power station, Calder Hall. These are all undergoing decommissioning at the moment, whilst reprocessing operations continue. As a geocharacterisation expert and geologist, my role in the understanding of uh, the environment is to gain an understanding through scientific research and study um, of uh, the science that underpins environmental safety cases uh, for the nuclear industry. The Environment Agency is responsible for regulating the radioactive discharges that come out of nuclear sites to ensure that they don't impact upon humans and the environment. One of the interests in understanding how the radionuclides are moved into the environment is actually whether they can be taken up into the food chain. When they come up into the food chain, we need to be then aware of the potential consequences for humans and also for the environment in terms of wildlife. In order to understand and be able to calculate the doses to people, we need to know the concentrations of radionuclides in food, um, in different uh, compartments in the environment like water, sediment, um, soils, so we can look at the internal and external dose that you might receive as a member of the public or as a, uh, a wildlife species. To do that we need to be able to measure the radionuclides that are present in those components and we use a number of different techniques, in situ uh, techniques that we can go out and make measurements in the field and we also collect sediments and soils and samples and bring them back to the laboratory where we can also analyse them for their radionuclide content. The release of contamination through particles or the contaminants bound to sediment impacts human health through external dose, inhalation or ingestion. Currently the sediments are locked up within the salt marsh. Uh, if they move into other areas of the estuary that makes them accessible to humans, wildlife and other biota. The climate related threats to mudflats and salt marshes are rising sea levels, increased storminess and increased temperatures. Rising sea levels and increased storminess cause an increase in erosion. Changes in temperatures could cause a change in vegetation which could allow the release of the sediments because the vegetation is no longer binding them together. At the University of Stirling, we're interested in the mobilisation of sediment found contaminants, including heavy metals and radionuclides. One of the possible impacts of pathogenically enhanced climate change may be changes in storminess and sea level rises, which will almost certainly have impact on salt marshes, with a possible consequence being the acceleration of the mobilisation of these sediment found contaminants tracking and sediment transport modelling work feeds into my project as my findings can be upscaled by having a full understanding of the sediment transport systems at play within the northwest of England. Models address issues over both the short term, such as storms that last a few hours and cause flooding, and also the long term, such as coastal erosion that occurs over decades. Useful model outputs for the coastal energy sector include maps of sediment movement, circulation, 
water temperature and also areas of erosion and flood risk. This is important both at present day and in the future. In the future, shorelines may have changed position and our oceans could be warmer. I've been working with an ocean circulation model. Through the model, I've been able to explore different particle pathways from the Rivel and Ravenglass estuary. I hope to possibly identify different areas of deposition or erosion in response to sea level rise. There is already a good understanding of past and present coastal processes at nuclear locations in Cumbria. One of the critical unknowns is future change, which is vital to the operation of existing and new build nuclear sites. Arcos is providing new observations and modelling to fill in some of these gaps in our understanding.